All right, so in class today we talked about concept maps and how we can use concept maps as a graphical organizer to take words that we're trying to teach students and help them see how these words are related with other concepts that we're also trying to get them to learn. So to do that, we're using concept maps to help them see these connections. And to do this electronically, instead of paper version, we're using the program CMAP tools. So if you would, you can make this screen a little bit smaller and open CMAP tools so you have a copy and can try some of these ideas yourself as we're going through this. So when you open CMAP tools, screen will start to open like this and you will get a box that actually has all of your CMAPs in it. So we've got all the CMAPs that we've created over here. Now, if you haven't created anything, this will be empty. But as soon as you save a CMAP, it will be saved here. And it will also be saved in a folder in your My Documents folder on your computer called My CMAPs. So we're going to make a new CMAP here. And it gives me a blank palette to work with. And we're going to open this to full size, so we've got a nice big palette. This can extend outwards any direction from the sides that you see right here. Uh, we also want to have up here in our window our style palette, so we'll open the style palette. The style palette allows us to change fonts, to change bubbles in here, to change our lines, and we'll be using some of these as we make our CMAP. So let's make a CMAP. To start making a CMAP, all you do is double click on the screen and a concept bubble opens. We're going to use the concept idea of water cycle. So we're going to put in some evaporation. And all you have to do is start typing. So double click, type, precipitation, and we'll double click and type uh, some condensation here. Now these are our major concepts, but we also are connecting those with other concepts like clouds or rain. Nice day today, but we've got to have some rain in there. And definitely we need to have snow because snow is the best type of precipitation out there. Now we can move these bubbles around a little bit by just clicking and dragging them. And uh, let's see here, we also need some water vapor in here. Of course, your list has a lot more on it than this, but we're going to start with this and show you how it works with these. So let's start connecting these. Now, connecting the concepts, as we talked about in class, uses a proposition and a propositional phrase. So a proposition is directional, which means it has an arrow that goes from one concept to the next. So we know that precipitation, click on it, and right here, this is for us to draw our arrows. So we're going to grab from here and drag right over to clouds because we know that precip precipitation falls from clouds. We also know that rain and snow are types of precipitation. So going the other direction this time, rain is a type of, now we could say that and that would work, but we always want to go for robustness. And you're going to hear me say that word a lot this semester, robustness in our concept maps. So not only is it a type of, but it is a type of liquid precipitation. And in the same manner, snow, is a type of solid precipitation. So you'll notice I could put this on two lines and if I wanted to go back to this one so it doesn't take up as much space, I can put this onto two lines also. Okay, so precipitation. Evaporation. Well, we know evaporation is related to water vapor. Um, we're going to move all of these down a little bit so we can get water vapor right up here. So evaporation forms 
water vapor. Now, could we make this more robust? Yes, we probably could. Um, evaporation forms water vapor through the heating of water, but for right now, we're just going to call it forms, and we're going to call that robust enough. Now, what does condensation do? Well, condensation takes water vapor and turns it back into liquid water. So we're going to make condensation and water vapor and we're going to move this proposition to the side and we're going to say condensation uses or we can say condensation turns here we go turns we'll put a blank water vapor into liquid water and where does it do this well condensation condensation forms forms clouds okay now we've gotten a little bit messy here and there's some things we can do to try to make this a little bit cleaner um, I'm going to actually grab all of these things right here. And I think I'm going to move them this way a little bit. Now, it's not bad, but all of our concepts are connected right now. So we have a complete concept map. And that's what we want to go for. We want to make sure there's no orphans out here. And generally, we try to have more than one connection between major concepts and other concepts. And so, um, we could connect evaporation and precipitation in here. We could connect condensation and evaporation in here. So there's some other connections that we could, but for this purpose, I'm just trying to show you how it works. Uh, let's say we want to make our major concepts stand out. What we're going to do is come over here to the style palette and on the object form here, we are going to add some color. So let's make these yellow. So all of our major concepts here, we'll make them yellow. Remember to use very light colors for these bubbles because you're going to be printing it off. And when you print it, if you use a dark color, it's going to make the bubble almost black and you won't be able to see the concept. Okay, so because you're printing most of everything in black and white. So we've got concepts here. Uh, we could even take our line and with the line styles palette over here, we can even turn our line into a curved line. So we can curve around things if we wanted to. Um, that can help with some of the, the formatting too. But we've got a concept map in CMAP tools, but we need to use it in a Word document for a part of a lesson plan. So what we can do is, let's see, we'll save our concept map first. So we'll call this a sample concept map. And we'll save that. And you'll notice here in my palette over here, here it is, a sample concept map. But we also want to make this usable in Microsoft Word. So what we're going to do is over on the file menu, we're going to export Go back to my map here. We're going to export my CMAP as an image file. And we are going to call this a sample concept map. And you'll notice down here, it's saving it as a JPEG file. And I want to save it on my desktop so I can find it much easier. So right here, we'll save. And it has successfully exported my concept map. Now we're going to check that. Um, we'll hide this for a second and look at right here. It is now on my desktop ready to use. So I go to my my document that I want to put it in and I've got my lesson plan that I'm putting together and down here I'm going to insert my concept map. So I go to my desktop, and right here is my sample concept map, and it imports it, and right there we have our concept map. We can make it smaller, 
and it's now usable in our Word document. So these concept maps, they can get, they can be small, or, you know, eventually you might get a concept map that gets rather large along the way. So feel free to play around with this, see how you can make them. Um, just to give you an example, here's one on electromagnet magnetization. So they can get big. So play around with it, see what you can do with it, and I'll look forward to seeing what you've come up with when you get back to class. Thanks very much.